Our local baths were built in the late 30s. Peeling paint, cracked tiles, a fever hookah with every swim guaranteed. <laughs> in the changing rooms were strange wooden stalls open to the front. No curtains to guard your modesty, no lockers for your valuables or clothes. We boys couldn't use these and were condemned to use worn and rickety wooden benches with hooks above to hang our clothes on. Strangers stared at us, hairy old men who towel their loins dry in a far too vigorous way. <laughs> the water was always cold and the taste and stench of chlorine was so strong it made your eyes stream. I shouldn't complain because this kept you germ free for days after a swim. <laughs> The baths had a strange echo and condensation ripped from the roof onto the swimmers below. Pigeons had somehow managed to invade the rafters, so that sometimes other things fell onto the bathers below as well. <laughs> there was a pecking order of swimmers. At the top were the men and women who wore serious swimming costumes, swim hats and goggles. Some of them even had nose clips. These, the elite, swam length after length, non-stop from one end of the pool to the other for their whole hour. Behind them came the less serious swimmers. These, the casuals, wore trunks and costumes that had seen better days and swam in short bursts, still doing lengths, but stopping after two or th three to stand at the side in small groups to chat, setting off again after a few minutes to swim again. Next came the family groups, mum and dad, with two or more small children. They stayed at the shallow end swimming widths, Sometimes one parent went off to swim a few lengths, leaving the other in charge of their brood. Then came us, the early teens, the lowest of the low. We swam in widths, judging the other swimmers and trying not to catch the eye of the lifeguard, who always shouted some echoing instruction or dire warning at us. It was not easy being at the bottom of the pecking order. Our bats had its commandments. One, thou shalt not run by the poolside. Two, thou shalt not bomb. Three, thou shalt not dive in the shallow end. Four, thou must wash thy feet in the foot bath so that your feet shall be pure. Five, thou shalt not smoke in the changing room. These other commandments had been carried down the mountain by Alderman C.F. Baines, GP. He'd opened the baths in 1938 and then closed them again for the duration of the war. I think they needed the water for firefighting or something. In the lobby was a brass plaque with the name of the boiler attendant who, until his ship was sunk in 1942, had continued to shovel coal into its boiler instead of the one at the baths. Sadly missed by all, except the captain of the U-62. So as a child in my early 60s, I went every other week to swim in the woolen trunks hand-knitted by my grandmother. <laughs> Guaranteed to come off if you dived in. <laughs> Guaranteed to come off if you heave yourself out of the water instead of climbing slowly up the ladder so that the water could drain back into the pool. Guaranteed to come off at some time because my mates thought it was funny. <laughs> Once one of the small children of a family group was sick in the water just in front of my swimming body. On another occasion, someone, unknown but hated to this day, defecated into the water, causing a mass evacuation and the loss of my trunks I washed up from the pool. I'm in my 60s now, my wife and children always wondered why I was reluctant to go swimming with them. If only they knew.